attacked by suicide bombers in Afghanistan. BBC 7 News at 11. You could forget three summers ago, an explosion and a fire tearing through a Silver Spring apartment building. Seven people were killed that night. Residents say they reported the smell of gas for weeks prior to the explosion. And tonight, some are saying it is happening again. Raising serious red flags about the response to their complaints. Annalisa Gale in Silver Spring with the story, new at 11. Annalisa? Allison and Jonathan, there are now new apartment buildings that replace those buildings that exploded nearly three years ago here on Arliss Street. But right behind those new buildings are residents that are still worried that that explosion could happen again at any time. And Carnacion de Bon still has a hard time sleeping at night at the Flower Branch apartments adjacent to the area where several buildings exploded in August 2016, leaving seven dead. It's very difficult for me, um, especially because I still have that trauma. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, the explosion's probable cause was linked to a failed gas regulator and a disconnected vent line, which allowed natural gas to enter a meter room before the explosion. I can't sleep at night sometimes having that thought that this could happen again like it did three years ago. Debon says he still occasionally smells natural gas in the basement of his building, which serves as the laundry room. But also in the other complexes in the premise. In a statement, Washington Gas confirms that they've had a few gas leaks. They say three minor leaks were detected and repaired in February. And last Thursday, they found another minor leak at the Flower Branch Apartments after they responded to a complaint from a resident. It's very unsafe that these utilities are in the laundry room. On Wednesday, Montgomery County lawmakers promised to fight for solutions that will prevent another tragedy. I want to know every 911 call that's come in. This community has been neglected for far too long. These children, their parents deserve better. They are residents of this county and they count. And one of the things that Mr. Debon says will help him sleep at night is if those service regulators and those meters are moved from the basement of the apartment complexes to the outside of the apartment complexes, which was also a recommendation from the NTSB. Live from Silver Spring tonight, Annalisa Gale, ABC 7 News. Well, even in places that are used to getting big snowstorms, <laughs> This is just getting ridiculous. This is outside of Denver. We're not talking about way high up there in the Rocky Mountains. It's just outside where it's snowing again. And this video was just before sunset tonight, just a couple of hours ago. A few more inches expected overnight, more than a foot expected up on the slopes. In fact, winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories are posted throughout that region right now, not just in Colorado, but up into Wyoming, all the way down into the northern part of New Mexico. And then you see all this blue out here. These are freeze watches that are in effect. I mean, here we are mid-May. It's getting really crazy, and you can see all the blue on the map. There's also snow coming down in parts of Minnesota, up into northern Wisconsin, over near uh, the UP of Michigan, and then the front that drapes on down. That's what we're tracking for our next weather maker on Friday. But for tonight, there are a few showers that are falling around in parts of Charles County, down to Westmoreland, King George County. It was raining pretty heavily earlier tonight in parts of Stafford County, down around Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania. But for the remainder of the night, what we're looking at for your planner, temperatures stay in the 60s. We can't rule out a few stray showers here and there. Even in the D.C. metro, we're going to be breaking down your Thursday forecast and look ahead to your Mother's Day weekend, all coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Bill, thank you very much. American nonprofit groups targeted in a suicide bombing and siege in Afghanistan. The Taliban claiming responsibility for the attack that took the lives of charity workers and security guards. Now, one of the groups based in Arlington was lucky. Everyone survived. Only on 7 tonight, Jay Korf with the charity group's leader explaining how. Wednesday morning, terror echoed across Kabul's skyline after a car bomb unleashed horror on two American NGOs in Afghanistan's capital. Authorities say the initial explosion was directed at Counterpart, an NGO based here in Arlington. Counterpart CEO Ann Hudock. The first blast was from suicide bombers in a vehicle. Uh, 